Today, Microsoft announced in a blog post it plans to spend $80 billion in fiscal 25 on the construction of data centers that can handle artificial intelligence workloads. Advancements in AI technology are pushing chip makers to be more optimistic about 2025. Headwinds, we know, though, could come from geopolitical and competition concerns. Joining us now to talk about all this is Tejas Desai, Global X Assistant Vice President and Research Analyst. Tejas, always good to see you. Uh, so let, let's start with that Microsoft news. They're going to drop 80 billion on these AI data centers. Um, Tejas, it's a, I mean, listen, that's a big number. It's a headline maker. It's not that surprising, though. Is, I mean, listen, investors know big tech, they're spending big on building out AI. Absolutely. Over the past couple of years, I think big tech has had significant evidence of success when it comes to artificial intelligence. They've been delivering services through their cloud computing franchises, through their existing technology platforms, and they see the ROI value of those investments, and they're coming back bigger and stronger for more. And that benefits companies like NVIDIA that provide the chips, the infrastructure that is needed for AI, but also a large number of data center companies as well as other semiconductor players. And, and sort of the, the flip side of that argument has been, or the bear case at times, right, has been, well, there's only four hyperscalers that are spending all of this money on these chips. What if they realize one quarter that it's not helping as much as they thought it was, right, and they stop spending a little bit? Is, that, is there any chance that that's something that happens in 2025, that some of these companies say, all right, we've spent a lot, let's maybe scale back and see how much productivity we're actually getting out of this? Well, semiconductor investments tend to be cyclical, and there is always uh, the risk of those investments being pulled back at a certain point. But we don't think 2025 is really the year for that to happen. Uh, number one, uh, mostly because the Blackwell chip that NVIDIA is bringing out to market is incredibly efficient and powerful. And we believe that that, that still um, will deliver a lot, of the, um, a lot of the compute power that is necessary. But outside of that, if you zoom out and focus on where this trend is going, AI infrastructure is maturing. And by 2030, in fact, we believe that nearly 80% of all of the spending that goes towards AI investments will go on AI inferencing infrastructure. And that market is still yet to develop. So with AI use cases developing across the board, uh, we see that demand for, for most of these computer-related uh, computer hardware should remain pretty strong. And so let's just, you mentioned NVIDIA Tejas, which had obviously just a stellar 2024. Um, looking at it 2025, I'm curious what you see. We, we've had some tech analysts come on who say, listen, just they look at Jensen Wong, the team, the technology, the install base, the developer ecosystem, and they just, they see another strong year ahead, but I'm curious whether that's what you see. We tend to agree with that. I think if you look at the Blackwell ramp up, uh, the data that is coming through in December from some of those early installments is very strong. Uh, we think that they can continue to hold that line through 2025. Um, typically, data centers were being built with a four to five year timeline in mind that is being compressed. So we're seeing a refresh cycle come through in a couple of years now. Um, and beyond that, NVIDIA has a lot of other markets where they can materially uh, see significant growth as well. Automobiles, for example, is one area where with autonomy on the equation, uh, could start to, to deliver meaningful growth. They've recently started to move into areas such as humanoid technology as well, and that's a massive uh, sort of technological revolution that is waiting to happen. So we see plenty of levers for the company to continue to hold their, their growth trajectory here. Mm -hmm. are, are there other companies, though, that you think could gain market share in 2025? Um, very likely, I think as those AI use cases sort of start to explode across the board, you will see demand for inferencing workloads growing. And in that equation, uh, in that scenario, you have companies like Broadcom or ARM, AMD, Qualcomm, Marvel sort of participate in that revolution as well. Our advice to investors would be, if NVIDIA has worked for you so far, great, but you need to zoom out and focus on the bigger AI infrastructure and data center landscape and really look to get some exposure to that dynamic there. We've talked a lot about hardware. There's analysts who come on and say, listen, next year, they expect to see a shift. Now it's time for software to play in this AI party. Is that what you see? Absolutely. Uh, we think cloud computing, even cybersecurity areas like that are generally underappreciated, undervalued. Uh, artificial intelligence offers a new platform opportunity for many of these companies to bring AI agents to market, bring automated solutions to market. There is a significant amount of value that these companies can, uh, can, can deliver. And really companies that have the data as well as the existing distribution to bring those products to market could do very well. So we like cloud computing, we like cybersecurity within that space. Has the AI power trade played itself out to this point? I mean, we, we were talking about utilities at one point leading the sectors in the S&P 500, right, in 2024, which I don't think a lot of people had on their bingo board going into the year. Is that trade overdone at this point, or is it actually still underappreciated based on how much power you think it's going to take? 
I think it is significantly underappreciated. I think our data center power needs could easily double by 2030, and that is a critical part of maintaining U.S. competitiveness. Um, I think, generally speaking, we need to produce more energy, but also we need to go on this grid infrastructure upgrade cycle uh, to bring all this power much closer uh, where it is needed, um, right where data centers are actually being run. So it's a tremendously innovative opportunity, um, and we think that investors that don't want to play this revolution from the technology side of things mm -hmm. uh, should possibly look at the electrification cycle and really look, at, uh, look, uh, look to play this from the energy side of the equation. Tej, it's always good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. I'm set. Appreciate it. Appreciate Thanks for having us.